This is the Birkenstock Arizona Sandal. Since 1973, it has adorned the feet of hippies, models, moms, dads, and even Gen Z. And it's Birkenstock's most popular sandal globally. Birkenstock. Birkenstock. Uh, I used to wear them in college. I'm not surprised. The versatility of the chunky two-strapped sandal means it can be dressed down with socks, casually complement a nice dress, or even add a pop of color or texture to an otherwise uninspired outfit. Birkenstock sandals have withstood decades of passing fashion fads. But in the early 2010s, the brand found its way into the world of high fashion and was selective about its partnerships. The company even turned down collaborations with streetwear giants Supreme and Vetement. In a 2018 interview with The Cut, one of Birkenstock's CEOs, Oliver Reichert, equated the collaborations with prostitution. But the privately held company generated an estimated $500 million in U.S. sales in 2019. Whether it's a counterculture statement or a modern day fashion staple, here's why Birkenstocks never go out of style. This is Suddenly Obsessed. The Birkenstock family has been in the shoe business since 1774, when Johann Adam Birkenstock started working as a cobbler in Germany. In 1896, his great-great-grandson, Conrad Birkenstock, had the idea to make and sell flexible footbed inserts. In 1964, Carl Birkenstock introduced the first Birkenstock sandal to its proprietary footbed, called the Madrid. In 1966, Birkenstock reached the U.S. when a German-American woman named Margot Fraser was visiting Germany on a spa trip and fell in love with a pair of Birkenstock sandals. She was so impressed with the footbed made with cork latex, lined with suede and finished with leather. Fraser asked Carl Birkenstock to grant her distribution rights to sell them in her home state of California. But Californians were not quite as enthusiastic about the clunky sandals. Birkenstocks were deemed so uncool that shoe stores simply refused to carry them. In fact, the only place Fraser could convince to sell the sandals were health food stores. From its earliest days in the United States, Birkenstocks have been considered a bit granola. With a focus on function over beauty, the shoes were seen as an anti-fashion statement and were adopted by hippie culture. During the 80s, America's love affair with the sandal began to fade. But by the 90s, footwear took a turn against the traditional. Designers began to incorporate grungier, chunkier shoes. In 1992, Mark Jacobs included Birkenstocks in his runway show as the creative director for Perry Ellis. But fashion critics didn't take to his utilitarian style, and he was ultimately fired. The fashion world wasn't necessarily ready for that at the time, but as we can see now, he was completely ahead of his time. It wasn't until the 2000s that comfort went mainstream, with Birkenstock joining the likes of Uggs and Juicy Couture tracksuits. Suddenly, it was cool to be comfortable again. In 2012, Phoebe Philo, the creative director of luxury brand Celine, introduced her new collection with models wearing sandals that looked suspiciously similar to Birkenstock's Arizona. Only these were lined with mink and debuted on the runway in Paris. Soon after, other designers like Givenchy took notice and put their own spin on chunky sandals that mimicked the aesthetic of Birkenstock and celebrities were wearing them everywhere. When one designer takes that chance and, and maybe makes that footwear a little bit more decorated, whether it's with charms or fur or metallic, that's when it eventually gets to the mainstream. 2013 also saw Birkenstock bringing in outside leadership for the first time. In Europe, it tapped Marcus Benzberg and Oliver Reichert and David Kahn as American CEO. Leading up to that, um, that management change, there was a lot of clashing internally and everyone was kind of focused inward, then being focused outward on like, what can we do to grow the brand? Birkenstocks are still made in Gerlitz, Germany, which hinders the company's ability to meet increased demand. I think they're gonna stay true to the to their history. Um, I think they're, you know, part of, part of making the brand exclusive and make people interested in it is, is having limited production. Birkenstock seems content with its strategy of measured growth, which is one reason it did the unthinkable, 
The brand turned down a collaboration with one of the biggest names in hype culture, Supreme. Actually, turned down is a bit of an understatement. In a 2018 interview with The Cut, Birkenstock CEO said the collaboration felt like prostitution. I think that's a little extreme to think of it as prostitution. Like I think cross-brand pollination can be smart if done the right way. But at the same time, I can appreciate a brand knowing where it stands in terms of its brand identity. Birkenstock felt it didn't need a trendy collaboration with Supreme to drum up excitement. Instead, the company released a line of colorful, waterproof, and more affordable versions of some of their best-selling footwear. They are adorable. Like, I saw someone wearing these, and that's what made me want them. I can't stress enough how much heat this is. Like, an all-white slide, dude? Come on, man. You can't get no better than this. You need these for summer. They have so many cute colors, and I really want to get, like, another color because I love them so much. They're perfect for the pool. They're perfect for the beach. Well, I think what we see with from uh, from Birkenstock here is not a channel segmentation strategy, but a consumer segmentation strategy. And they're going out and doing research and saying, okay, I need to be in this market because that's where I have customers. Birkenstock, is, in many ways, is one of the few brands, at least that I can think of in retail, that has this broad appeal. They've done a good job, I guess, of targeting different audiences. In 2019, the company partnered with designer Rick Owens. Some of the sandals sold out despite retailing for up to $570. The brand is incredibly strategic about where it sells its shoes. That's why you can find them in stores like Famous Footwear and Urban Outfitters, but also at Nordstrom and Saks Fifth Avenue. As opposed to the shoe business, which tends to be much more about just shoveling a lot of product out, uh, they have kept their growth uh, very much under control. And again, scarcity breeds uh, excitement on the part of the consumer, and I think that's been part of the winning strategy for them. Bergenstock applies the same strategy to its brick and mortar footprint. The company only has 54 stores worldwide. Just two of those are in the U.S. I don't come away saying, sensing that they are looking to build a huge uh, retail empire. They were both wearing Birkenstocks. Millennials who may have laughed at their dad's Birkenstocks are now embracing them. Millennials who grew up and associated Birkenstocks with like their uncle at a barbecue or their science teacher where they couldn't have like fathomed the idea of being caught dead in them. When like 10 or 15 years goes by and they start to develop like a really strong personal style in maybe their late teens or early 20s, they choose to reclaim those things and reimagine them in a cool way. Experts say the unisex nature of Birkenstock is driving sales with younger consumers. If you think about a pair of jeans or a hoodie, uh, you think about a Chuck Taylor sneaker, a Birkenstock Arizona sandal, these are products that really are easily worn by both men and women. I, I think that's a, an important attribute in, in today's marketplace. And Gen Z seems to be interested in all things 90s. I think Gen Z is obsessed with the 90s, which I always find a little bit funny because it wasn't that long ago. But Gen Z and anyone else for that matter are no longer able to order Birkenstocks from one of the biggest marketplaces in the world. Amazon is saying bye-bye to Birkenstock. Birkenstock is the biggest brand we've seen leave Amazon. In 2016, Birkenstock removed all of its merchandise from the largest online retailer in the world. The company also cut ties with other third-party retailers. Counterfeiters were allegedly selling fakes for $20 less than the price of authentic Birkenstocks, which drew ire from CEO David Kahn. The Amazon marketplace creates an environment where we experience unacceptable business practices, which we believe jeopardize our brand. He goes on to say that policing this activity has proven impossible. But the decision to leave the biggest online marketplace in the world didn't hurt the company's bottom line. In fact, experts say the decision boosted the company's standing with consumers. After they very publicly pulled out of Amazon, Google said that Birkenstock was the single most searched brand um, uh, that back to school. Birkenstock's rise certainly wasn't sudden, but its popularity is incredibly durable. Trends like fur, glitter, and animal print will come and go, but comfort and value never go out of style.